We're going to be talking about Governor Deval Patrick's State of the State Address and President Obama's State of the Union Address on this segment. Here we are in January of 2012 and healthcare as it should be is still a very big issue from needless people suffering, of course that's the main issue, and the cost of caring for chronic diseases. So let's start with Governor Deval Patrick's State of the State Address in Massachusetts and I want to point out some of the points that he made. Some of the comments are extraordinarily wonderful and I appreciate Governor Patrick's comments that he made in the State of the, U State, of the State Address. We can do more to control health care costs as well, which opened up his section on health care. We will avoid nearly a billion dollars in cost increases in this fiscal year and another several hundred million more next year. So he's talking about cost savings with all the initiatives going on in Massachusetts. We're going to tr translate this into the national level as time goes along. However, he says, too many small businesses and too many working families still go through an annual ritual that starts with notice of another premium increase and too often ends with a new plan costing the same or more with less coverage. How many of you go through this every year? You see your deductibles go up, your co-payments go up, your premium goes up, but coverage goes down and your flexibility of going to the doctors that you want to go to goes down and maybe it doesn't cover chiropractic as well, that goes down. And that, that's a problem. Soaring healthcare costs, why do these costs go up? Because everything is costing more, particularly the cost of chronic disease, more on that in a moment. Governor Patrick continues and here's the crux of it now. We need to stop paying for the amount of care and start paying instead for the quality of care. Wonderful statement and it gets even better. We need to empower doctors to coordinate patient care and to focus on wellness rather than sickness. That's Governor Deval Patrick saying this. We need to have doctors focusing on wellness rather than sickness. I'm going to add on my comments. We have a reactive disease care system, not a proactive health care system and we need to move more towards wellness which would be a proactive health care system and that could save us hundreds of billions of dollars per year in health care costs. I've done that show on, on other shows that you'll see on my YouTube page so go check those out as well. Continuing along this thought, I want to talk about the Jocelyn Diabetes Center here in Massachusetts and just this morning off their website uh, January 25th of 2012, they had this on their website, they received, the Jocelyn Diabetes Center received a $5 million grant from the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center, a $5 million grant. They added on to that $5.8 million in Jocelyn donations. So now they have $10.8 million to work with and they're putting that into a comprehensive translational center. This center is going to be focused on, now watch me now, listen, listen, curing type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and the website continues, as well as advancing our work in diabetes prevention and obesity, and I believe that what they mean is obesity prevention. Now I'm going to challenge the Jocelyn Diabetes Center from a couple of aspects. One is, I want them to flip-flop their statement there. And I want them to say the majority of this $10.8 million is going to be focused on prevention of diabetes and obesity. And some of that money will be going to curing type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And I'll give you the statistics why in just a couple of minutes. Some of the stats off their website are this. More than 25 million Americans have diabetes. That's mainly type 2 adult onset diabetes. Increasing by 1 million per year. That's a lot. More than 400,000 adults in Massachusetts have been diagnosed with diabetes. This is increasing at epidemic rates. Listen to this stat. A 61% increase, 61% increase in diabetes in only 12 years. Genetics doesn't explain that. It can only be the environment, which means our health habits are atrocious. That is the only reason that we can explain this rapid epidemic rise 
of diabetes and other chronic diseases. The cost of diabetes in Massachusetts is $4.3 billion annually. We can cut that down by 80%, Jocelyn Diabetes Center, by changing to prevention. So we need to shift that to a prevention model, not a cure model. Now, how do we know this? Well, you remember me talking about this study. This was from the Harvard School of Public Health off their website, diseaseriskindex.org harvard.edu 2008 they talk about the most common diseases in developed nations today are chronic diseases heart disease cancer diabetes arthritis alzheimer's like heart disease and cancer some of which are under a person's control like diet exercise and smoking listen to the statistics although the risk of most chronic diseases can't be totally eliminated says harvard school of public health it can still be significantly reduced. If everyone in the United States led a healthy lifestyle, 80% of the cases of heart disease and diabetes, 80% of diabetes, Jocelyn Diabetes Center, 80% can be prevented. If we can prevent 80%, I challenge you that 80% of the $10.8 million in your new center should be on prevention, and the other 20% you can do the cure and genetic research or whatever else. 70% of the cases of stroke and over 50% of the cases of all cancer. Over 50%. And I think the, the statistics are even higher. You can prevent more cancer than just over 50%. It's more like 75%. By leading a healthy lifestyle. And a healthy lifestyle is better nutrition, regular reasonable exercise, and quitting smoking. Now, the price we pay. The World Health Organization comes up with some statistics. The United States ranking in the world compared to all the other countries. Healthy life expectancy, we're at number 24. Health performance rates, we are number 72. And health expenditure per capita, we are number one. So we're spending more money per person than any other country around the world but we rank somewhere around 49th in overall health numbers. That is a problem. Back to Massachusetts. The Life Sciences Bill back in 2008, I've done several shows on this, check out my ones on my YouTube page. The Life Sciences Bill, $1 billion by Massachusetts in 10 years. That's $100 million into the Life Sciences. According to those statistics by the Harvard School of Public Health, we should take 75% of that $1 billion in 10 years and pump it into prevention programs. That's going to give us the best bang for the buck. We should do this on a national level as well. And do you remember that show that I did, the show that I, I set up this system of creating jobs improving prevention and saving billions of dollars, saving $500 billion conservatively per year on healthcare in this country? Well, that was focused simply on this. We set up clinics. We take this money and we set up these clinics in every city and every town across the, the nation. And we show people how to shop for healthier food with the same amount of money. We have cooking classes every day. And we have exercise classes also every day regardless of the person's ability to exercise, whether somebody's in a wheelchair or somebody is reasonably fit or someone who has never exercised before, we have exercises classes in these clinics in every city and town around the country. In there, we can also amp up our smoking cessation programs by having those available in there as well. So maybe we can take the 20% of smokers in this country and knock that down a little bit further, maybe to 15%, let's say. So these clinics, would be all about prevention, all about wellness. As Governor Deval Patrick said, we have to uh, focus on wellness rather than sickness, so we have to spend the dollars in that direction to do that. Another area that we can save a tremendous amount of money is antibiotic-resistant infections. And do you remember that study that I told you about? Remember when I was talking about Norway and I basically told you there's no MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, in Norway. Why is that? Well, they stopped giving antibiotics to people unless they really, really needed it. There's no sign of a dangerous and contagious staph infection, MRSA, 
uh, in Norway that kills tens of thousands of patients in the most sophisticated hospitals of Europe, North America, and Asia. The reason Norwegians stop taking so many drugs. Their model is simple and straightforward. Norwegian doctors prescribe fewer antibiotics than any other country. So people do not have a chance to develop resistance to them. So if you get a cold, a sniffle, and a fever, you're not getting antibiotics in Norway. You have to ride it out. Patients with MRSA are isolated. Medical staff who test positive stay at home so the contagion is, is knocked down. Doctors track each case of MRSA by its individual strain, interviewing patients who we've been in contact with, and so on. Uh, Norwegians are lackadaisical about their colds and coughs. They tough, tough it out, and even with low-grade infections, they say no antibiotics whatsoever. So you don't have a chance of getting these resistant infections. We don't throw antibiotics at every person with a fever, they're saying. We tell them to hang on, wait and see, and we give them a Tylenol to feel better, not an antibiotic. In Japan, with its cutting-edge technology in modern hospitals, about 17,000 people die from MRSA every year. And in Norway, it's zero or close to zero. And if anybody dies with MRSA in Norway, it's usually somebody who traveled there with it. Imagine the cost savings if we knocked down these superbug infections by stop giving antibiotics, usually for things that antibiotics don't work for, which is viral infections. So, as a review, what are we going to do moving ahead? If we're going to take Governor Deval Patrick's advice and move towards wellness and away from disease, if we're going to move towards a proactive healthcare system and get away from a reactive disease care pill-driven system, we have to put our money where our mouth is and take 75% of that $1 billion of the Life Sciences Bill and pump it into clinics to help people shop, cook healthy meals, exercise, and quit smoking. The Jocelyn Diabetes Center, because we can prevent 80% of type 2 adult onset diabetes, has to take 80% of their $10.8 million and put that into prevention programs, 20% into the other research. In the United States overall, on a federal level, we have to set up these clinics in every city and town across the country. And the last thing we're gonna to need to do is revamp the food stamp system. Something like 40 million people are, in, uh, are using food stamps in this country. The problem with food stamps is it's limited income, it's limited money. So people are going to buy cheap calories when they use food stamps. They're going to buy crackers and chips and soda and candy because it's cheap, because we subsidize that as taxpayers, because we subsidized farm subsidies, which makes corn and soy and wheat and so on and so forth, cheap calories, cheaper. What we need to do is this, is with food stamps, we have to make soda $10 a bottle and a bunch of broccoli five cents. We need to take a bag of chips and make that $20 and a bunch of asparagus 10 cents. I don't have that all figured out, but you can see where I'm going with this. Lastly, we have to make it a, some sort of a, a financial benefit or a significant financial negative for people to not attend these clinics and learn how to shop for healthy foods, cook healthy things for themselves and their family, get to the exercise classes and the smoking cessation classes. I'd be glad to take any of your advice that you possibly have, but we have to make it a financial incentive to go to these clinics and a financial disincentive not to go. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller, please join me again.